k and Pro Series West Tradition. It's opened up nicely, has pretty good legs. Stand by for the finish. If you didn't know better, you'd say that's Eric Jones. Well, it is. By now, you know the face of Haley Deegan, strong so far in practice and qualifying, as has been William Byron, studying for tomorrow's cup race. But they'll have to get around Will Rogers, starting on pole, runner-up last year at this race. Welcome, everyone, to the Carneros 200 from Sonoma Raceway. Interesting day, as there are five Cup Series drivers in this k race and one in the broadcast booth. That is Parker Kligerman. Leading the field to green today is last year's runner-up finisher here at Sonoma, Will Rogers. Will, you had a great race here last year, but it's going to be different, and the strategy is going to differ now that we have two breaks. So what is going to be your plan of attack? Yeah, we definitely had a great race last year against Kevin Harvick, obviously finishing second, so we're back here for redemption. Uh, but yeah, strategy is going to be really key today. We have two brakes, one set of tires, and only so much fuel. Uh, so going an extra 40 laps or so on a tank could really uh, be difficult to do, so I'll be saving as much as I possibly can. Uh, really, I'm going to kind of figure out where the pace is and then understand where guys are using strategy against us. So uh, try, to, try to pick the right thing to do and make sure we're at the point of the field at the end. Many of the competitors behind you here have said you're the one to beat. Do you feel any extra pressure hearing that? And who's on your radar is who you're looking out for? Uh, I'd like to think there's pressure, but no. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of just in my in my zone here. You know, I'm really familiar with Sonoma Raceway. Obviously, road courses are kind of my thing. Uh, so just feel comfortable. It's actually added, um, added credibility. I guess you could say. I guess against guys like uh, Alex Bowman and, and William Byron, people like that, it, it really means a lot, actually. Uh, but guys I'm looking out for, definitely Alex Bowman, William Byron, my teammate on JPR. He'll definitely be a, a contender. And then uh, Haley Deegan. I mean, she's up here, too. She's given a, a really good first road course showing. So uh, definitely some people to look over my shoulder for. All right, that's Will Rogers looking to get his first career win here in the K&N West Series at Sonoma Raceway. Focusing on his rear tire wear. Heather? Racing for Jefferson Pitts Racing this weekend in the K&N West Series is Cup regular William Byron. He is making his first start in the Cup Series this weekend at Sonoma, so this race today is all about seat time. He only has a handful of starts on road courses, and other than that, it's just been coming down to go-kart experience when it goes to right turns and left turns for William. He also said he's really been working on getting through turn 11, and he feels that tire management will be key to winning this race. He rolls off second. It's a great point, Heather, and I can relate to that myself because this, <laughs> making my first start here this weekend, I can tell you it's incredibly tough, and there's just not a lot of ways to prepare other than getting laps on the racetrack. Look at the starting grid. Four of the five cup drivers are in the top ten, but what about Haley Deegan's qualifying there, Parker? Very impressive qualifying effort by Haley Deegan there, and I know she actually spent a little time in the TRD simulator in the last couple mm -hmm. weeks getting ready for this, so hopefully that obviously helps. See the rest of the 27 car starting grid. A couple of drivers in numbers that you might not recognize. Jesse Wuji is in the 40 this weekend. And several drivers, I'll call them gentlemen racers, have joined the group as they often do at Sonoma to get laps on one of the most famous raceways in the world, the Sonoma Raceway. Back at Sonoma, cleanup is complete for the Matt Levine wreck. Levine done for the afternoon, unfortunately. And the restart goes back to the white number seven on the left-hand side of the top of your screen there. That's Will Rogers. He's led every lap so far in today's event. Now, and he, go ahead. Well, he got an incredible jump the first time. Let's see what he gets here. It's his teammate to the outside, William Byron. And Byron gets a little bit better jump this time. Out in that white 17 on the right-hand side of the screen there. But everybody else pitted. And oh, by the way, fresh tires and adjustments. This is the restart that we may really want to pay attention to, Parker. Yeah, this is going to be really interesting to see how Dave Mayhew can stay up there right now. We know how much experience he has in this series, but that's going to be a tall order of a lot of these cars on new tires. Oh, and he gets a little wearily sideways there off turn two right in front of Will Rogers. Careful. Jones gets in line behind the 27 of Byron. Oh. Contact between Rouse and Deegan, and Partridge now looks to take advantage. He looked like he might have been wanting to throw it down the inside there. Oh, wow. They're, yeah, they're bumping a little bit down into turn four, but Haley Deegan holds them off. Great effort by her. 
What's, what's the mindset, Parker, if you're Will? You know that road racing is your specialty. You've won uh, the last however many races in a row in this series. You know that Eric is looking for more experience and may not be as good as you. You're going to take that line in turn 11. And that's exactly what you're going to do. You're just going to pass him because you're probably the better car. You've been the best car all day. Wanted to redeem himself, and he did. Will Rogers, the winner. You see the rest of the finishing order there. Nice, impressive run for Haley Deegan. We talked about her good qualifying run, Parker, and the rest of the field as they go through here. What else stood out for you from today's action? Well, he said redeem himself. He couldn't beat one cup driver last time. He beat five this time. There so that go. was impressive. Haley Deegan had a great run at her first road course finish in the top ten. I thought that was an excellent run as well. Let's find out what Almirola has to say about finishing second. Finishing second today is Eric Almarola. Eric, it's been since 2008 since you were in the K&N car, and here you are in your West debut. How would you rate your day? Uh, it was a good day. Um, I'm not uh, a very good road course racer, which is why I entered the race and, and just trying to get more laps and more repetition uh, for the cup race tomorrow. And I feel like it helped a lot. Uh, just kind of helped get me in a rhythm. Uh, I picked up some things. So uh, I'm disappointed that we finished second. I would love to have won uh, out here in, in wine country. But uh, Will just had an amazing car, and, and he's really, really good uh, road racer. So uh, I, I've heard he's basically won everything. Thing on, on the road races, and I think he finished second to Kevin out here last year, so um, if uh, if I was going to finish second to someone, I guess Will's, Will's a good one to finish second to. Is there anything you would have done different strategy-wise? No, I thought our strategy was perfect. Uh, Richard, my crew chief, um, you know, wanted us to stay out, so the beginning of the race I really just was patient, saved the tires. Our car just wasn't as good. William Byron bringing it home third here at Sonoma in the K&N West race. You look a little bit exhausted. How grueling was that race out there for you? Yeah, it was fine. I just uh, didn't have any helmet helmet fan it uh fell off so it was it was all right it just uh hot one out there car was pretty good uh congrats to will did a great job um really good at the road courses i still need to work on them but uh we're getting there so good top three finish hopefully going to sunday uh, i think we start eight so should be fun there any big takeaways that you'll take to sunday uh just it'll be cooler tomorrow so that'll be that'll be good um but other than that, just uh, the shifting and, and just how to manage your tires, how to try to manage them. Didn't feel like I did a great job. I was just on the tight side, so I had to um, kind of drive through the fronts. But overall, was was not too bad, and uh, we'll take third. Thank you. Wow. No helmet hose? I mean, that's what? incredible, Dave. I, you can see how wore out he is there, how much he's sweating, and I hope he gets some fluids to get ready for tomorrow. Won't be quite as hot, but that was definitely a hot day today. And somebody else that we love to watch here at Sonoma, that's A.J. Allmendinger. Let's dial him up. A.J., this is Jeff up in the booth. You got me? I got you, man. Man, you are just so comfortable and confident when we come to a road course. I'm just curious, you know, where do you create speed and opportunities on the track that we don't see others take advantage of? Well, I mean, it's my nature. It's what I grew up doing between karting and, and through champ cars. Now, here's three drivers who were all in the k and support race yesterday. Uh, Alex Bowman lost an engine. Eric Almirola finished second. William Byron in the 24 finished third yesterday. And I asked him, asked William this morning, how did that help you for today? He said, well, the horsepower, the transmissions of those cars are so different from these. These cars have so much power. But as far as getting my bearings and knowing where I'm going, it was a big help. I think this is the toughest track to come to as a rookie without any experience. So the more lap time you can get, the better. Here is McMurray. Jamie? Well, you see Jamie just taking his driving gloves off. They have been working on the front of this car, an oil pump issue. They thought they could fix it. Matt McCall, his crew chief, said they're trying hard. Now I see them talking. It looks like he is telling Jamie there is no chance. Helmet is off. He's getting out. His day is done. Thanks, Jamie McMurray, veteran road racer in go-karts. Car has been decent, def definitely some handling issues, making a wedge adjustment you saw it there in the rear window for the 22, guys. The Dillon brothers both stopped, Ty and Austin. Suarez is in, David Reagan, William Byron. Hopping, little road racing, little agricultural racing. Yeah, this is Sonoma. You know, since Jeff Gordon won three straight here, no driver has won consecutive races at Sonoma, which Kevin Harvick is trying to accomplish today.
You won three straight here? I don't know how the heck I did that. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is Gordonville right here. I looked at the record. Your name is number one all the way down. Boy, you hear he's, Boy, that's he's, how out much, of, he's out of tires. That's how much the grip has been lost in those <laughs> yeah, tires. Nothing. But all they have to do if this thing stays green is just duplicate the run he just had. It's the same number of laps. Through turn 10, will he or won't he? Bet you. There he comes. Brigham. Well, this entire 78 team with a performance that was worthy of an Academy Award. They were up on the wall and ready for the psych out. They do it for real this time. His race car has good turn. He lacks some drive off of the corners early on in the race. They adjusted for that. He's been all quiet on the radio so far. Four tires. Chase Elliott in as well. Kurt Busch assumes the lead. Matt? And Chase Elliott, it's been a work in progress. Very solid effort for the driver of the nine. He felt like he could have had more cut left and right, but better all overall from the start of the run until they hit pit lane. Air pressure change and he's away. So that leaves Kurt Busch and Eric Jones out front, having not yet made a pit stop in stage three. Harvick and Boyer move up to third and fourth. Suarez fifth has not stopped. Neither have Keslowski nor Kane in eighth and ninth. We always like to use the start finish line as a judge where someone is. We'll see where the four is when the 78 comes cut. When the four goes by, see how far the 78 is behind. William Byron had an uncontrolled tire on his pit stop. Eric Jones now second. And here comes Harv. Now every car that Harvick comes to right now is critical to make sure that he gets by them as fast and as clean as possible. He wants to keep as much of a gap between he and Truex on those fresher tires as possible. Kurt Busch gives up the lead to make his pit stop in front of Regan. Well, Kurt Busch, who hydrated extra today, it's very hot out here. These guys are working hard in the cars. He cramped in this race in 2008. He didn't want to have that happen. Right now, his race car is too loose through the right-handers. He needs more grip on the left side tires. Brad Kozlowski, Casey Kane come to pit road. You're watching leader Eric Jones on the right, his teammate Daniel Suarez. In the pits on the left. Yeah, 23 laps to go with much better tires and a fast car. Uh, he's going to get there and he should be able to get the lead. Truex, we we're talking about. Inside of William Byron, the rookie who, who has gone one lap down. Nice job by Byron. Oh, you saw how he moved up out of the way and gave Truex the line, let him go. The heads up kid right there. I love the way he races. This kid's going to be tough the second half of the year. I guarantee you. So now the battle is for second. Boyer, our most recent winner. Taking a chance on him getting into me and knock me off in the dirt. And uh, running a textbook race is Martin Truex Jr. who began his racing career as a young boy racing go-karts on road courses. Harvick in a turn 11, getting to the inside of Ryan Newman, who moves aside for the second place car. Still 21 seconds back. He's been eating into Truex's lead, which is twice the largest margin of victory ever at Sonoma. 1994, Ernie Irvin over uh, Jeff Bodine. Bodine's here this weekend looking on. 78 is the official car of owner Barney Visser, the Vietnam vet. Proud owner and backer of his driver, Martin Truex Jr.
First responders, dear God, that are, are here to, to be with us, just your protection, God. We honor you as our Lord and our Savior, the name that is above all names, Jesus Christ. Amen. It was a beautiful day, the sun beat down. Daniel Suarez, Daniel's job got tougher. He's got to go to the back. Coming up here, you got Kevin Harvick. 14 of Clint Boyer, who made quick work getting to the front of this field, and he was excited about his race car over the radio. As I said, the only issue, that digital dash, which they could not reset while he was out on track. They were going to try to reset it while he was here on pit road. It's been a nice day for William Byron. I should say a nice weekend for William Byron. Made the third round in qualifying. That was a big goal for the race team. And as he told us in the pre-race show, feels like the team has made some big improvements. The car too free for William the further he runs. So they're going to make a wet adjustment. Also an air pressure adjustment trying to tighten up that 24 car. One thing these teams don't want to do on pit road is have any kind of violations. And the 19 team of Daniel Suarez had a man over the wall too soon. Oh, and the 14 car. 14, which is the Geico restart zone. Almarola, Harvick, one and two. Fighting for position back there. Fourth, fifth, sixth, four oh. wide now for fifth. Got to know it's Kyle Busch. He's going to take that outside. That's his M.O., man. If he's on the outside line and he can make it three wide or four wide, he's going to try to do it. And Kyle Larson has asked for help with those lap cards. He told the spotter, he said, clear the top for me, clear the top. They got in the way one time, and he had to dive to the bottom. So those lap cars could be a factor, guys. Oh, they will. There's a lot of them in front of these guys. They're going to have to navigate that. And I think that that could play a huge role. I think it will play a role in who wins this race, who gets through the lap cars the best. Coming up on 10 laps to go. These two have finished one, two, seven times between Cup and Xfinity Series races. The guy who's always finished. I think he's running as hard as he can. I think Kyle Larson's moved to the bottom in one and two the lap before he actually got into the wall was the signal that he didn't think he was catching him fast enough. He had to try something different. So not only did he try to do something in one and two by running the bottom, he tried to do something different in three and four. Continuing a Daytona tradition that dates back to the 1970s, please join us in honoring three of America's bravest heroes on this Independence Day weekend. Each of these individuals was awarded a Medal of Honor for going above and beyond the call of duty while participating in daring operations against enemy forces. Please welcome Staff Sergeant Don Jenkins, Command Sergeant Major Gary Luttrell, and Master Sergeant Leroy Petrie. That is the highest and most prestigious personal military decoration anyone can receive. What an honor. Hey, Rick, even though Chase Elliott starts on the pole tonight, he told me stage one is very critical for this race team. Why? He said, I've learned over the years that at restrictor plate racing, you have to prove your car has speed. If you show it has speed, teams will work with you. Help me early in the race, and let's help each other late and maybe get to victory lane. Kelly? United States Marine Corps. Well, we heard Denny Hamlin talking about seeing the air, Junior, and I, I, I know I could never see the air, and I always wondered when, you know, your dad talked about seeing the air, what exactly what he's, was he referring to? Yeah, he, he couldn't see it either, but he knew where it was, and he always, he always insisted on wearing an open face helmet, and he said he could feel the pressure in the car change and feel and hear the motor better to be able to understand when he's working that air properly. You can see him side draft Kyle Petty right there. He's going to side draft old Dale Jarrett right here in the Yates rocket. You see him side draft and move away. You know, he's trying to get away from Dale Jarrett so they don't side draft him back. I mean, Dad was, I don't know if Dad invented the side draft, but he certainly was the best at it. See William Byron back there and say he's got a great push by Stenhouse. 
don't know what William Byron's going to do at a plate track. What's his moves going to be? Is he going to stay in line? Is he going to be aggressive? It's the what? first we've seen him in a cup car contending at a plate track. I talked to him this morning. He said he was going to be aggressive. He said he thought that was the only way to run well is go and attack. He's got great company behind him with Stenhouse and Chase Elliott. Those guys are going to push him hard and give him that opportunity. He won an Xfinity race here last year. So. Sure did. Get back to action. <laughs> We're about to. Brad Keselowski, William Byron. Keselowski in the two, Byron in the 24. Coming back into the Geico restart zone. Green flag back in the air. And in the background, you saw Paul Menard coming off of pit road. It's a real tight restart here. These guys are lined up tight on the bottom and the top. Hard to tell who's going to prevail here, Jeff. You see William Byron get out this lead for the first time. He's gotten a great shove from Kurt Busch. He does. It's clear. Will he be smart enough? Will he do what Keselowski does and move back and forth in front of the inside and outside line to try to keep that momentum up in his car? Or will he stay committed to that top? Is that Tab Boyd's job? Tab Boyd, the spotter for the 24, you know, is he going to give him that information? It, he can give him all the information he wants, but the driver's got to be able to know what to do with it. Got to have the experience to know what to do with it. And it's a little hard as a rookie to assert yourself, oh. right? You have to assert yourself and say, I'm going to lead this race no matter what, and that's what William's going to have to do. He went to the bottom. He got a good shove from the two. I thought the 41 was going to get in his quarter panel and battle him side by side, but he went down there, got a good shove from the two, keeps the lead. How about riding right in the middle now? Just waiting for whichever oh, line. Push. Huge car. push. And around oh. goes the two. Too big of a push. He caught the 41. The big one. Logano's caught up in it. Oh, my goodness. Denny Hamlin. Austin Dillon has damage. Daniel Suarez trying to avoid. Ty Dillon sliding in. A wreck 22 of Joey Logano sitting on the apron. A wreck two. All the Penske cars right there. The, the, the one organization that everybody came here thinking they had the best shot to win. All three of their cars wiped out in this accident. Ryan Blaney in the 12 sitting there in the grass. You saw the two of Brad Keselowski. A lot of damage to the nine of Chase Elliott. So many good cars. This ha this wreck happened in the front of the field. This is what Daytona is all about. Took out some contenders, and now this really is an opportunity race for somebody sitting out at 16, sitting out at top 16. Denny Hamlin with big damage, another fast car. A big push we saw out of the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Was it too big of a push? Well, let's take a look at the replay. Let's take a look at the replay from the nine car first. See all the damage to Chase Elliott. It'll get pretty aggressive here. And... Oh, he just, Ricky, Ricky was pushing him and also turning down the racetrack, and that was enough to turn the two car around. It was it's just so much happening right there, and they were coming up on Williams so fast that I believe Brad was sort of th throttling down a little bit because he, he was going to hit run to the back of, of the 24 because you see the 24 blocking here. So Brad's probably throttling down a little bit. Teen radio as well of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. His head straight, man, that just happened, not a big deal. I'm sure it looks bad, but he got, he got blocked pretty bad. His head right, man, he'll win this next stage. Temple. Well, you hate to be involved in something like that if you're Ricky Stenhouse Jr. And I'm sure you feel like you know you were partly to blame for it, but at the same time, the race goes on. You you got to get your head right, as he said, and just move on. Yeah, I think Ricky definitely knows he was partly to blame for everything happening here, and he had a lot of guys criticizing his activities and and driving style in the Daytona 500 earlier this year, and I think this was going to get him talking again. Probably going to hear this this week some of the other drivers in this wreck. We talked about it coming on the air, Junior, is that this race matters so much to so many that they're going to do things that they otherwise wouldn't do because there's a reward for doing it. There's also a risk. The risk is this. The reward is we've seen Ricky Stenhouse Jr. win races on, on plate tracks and move himself into the playoffs. And for that team, 
that's been really their savior. They have not run well the way you used to see in a Roush team run. So when they come here, the pressure is high. Well, you have to perform and just yeah, well bounds a little bit. Even you know, even with that happening and that you know, you, you got to shake that off. Field Care Center, you okay? And what did you feel hitting you in the back there? Yeah, I'm okay. You know, just Ricky was pushing. He didn't do anything wrong. It's uh, my fault. You know, uh, it a really fast Miller Light Ford. And uh, you know, Dave, I'm just not wrecking enough people. I need to wreck more people so they'll stop throwing bad blocks. Um, and that's what's happening to me on the plate track. So, you know, everybody that's watching, all them drivers out there, throw another bad block. I mean, I'm just going to drive through you and wreck you. So look out and tell Dave. All right. The words of Brad Keselowski, Kelly. Yeah, the 41 and Kurt Busch really just innocent. What did you see or feel and try to get through with? <laughs> it felt like the longest crash ever. Uh, I feel like I was in the middle of the whole thing, and uh, it just looks like there's some hard, aggressive pushing up front, and um, you know, cars trying to get to the lead. And once one car sits sideways in front of the whole field, you can't stop when you're going 200 very quick, and uh, when there's no gap in between all the cars on, on a restart like that. And, uh, we just got torn up in it. So part of it, you know, it's just it's Daytona, it's super speedway racing. Sometimes you get through it and, and you can win. Sometimes you crash. And it's just uh, part of the game. And you got to have that mindset when it starts for some reason. But um, unfortunately, we were on the, the bad 50% of it this time. Hopefully we're on a good 50% when we go uh, back to Talladega in the playoffs and uh, try to get another win over there. Joey usually does this type of racing very well. He's out early tonight, guys. Unfortunate. You heard one driver say, well, you got to laugh. And how about... Brad Kozlowski being very vocal as we ride along with Bubba Wallace and see what a driver's perspective is like. All right, here's Joey Meyer. Spotter for the two. Fine line between managing and blocking. If anyone asks, one works, the other one doesn't. We just heard Brad Kozlowski say, I'm going to wreck guys if they block me in a poor way. What does that even mean? How can you block somebody wrong? Well, you know, they had such a huge run on William. You know, and he moves down in front, and the two has to lift so much that he basically gets spun around on the front of the on the nose of the 17 car. I mean, it wasn't a great, very clean push from the 17, but it, you know, it's hard to say whether that was a. Re I've seen more aggressive blocks. I've seen blocks that are just really aggressive, and to me, I didn't initially think well, that, Brad, that was a. Is Brad blaming William Byron for that? I think Brad thinks the block was aggressive. That's okay. right. Brad saying William Byron. He turned down in front of me. I had to lift. Sinau, he said it wasn't Stenhouse's fault. Right. Stenhouse got in the back of me. And we talked about it. William Bryan leading as a rookie. Yeah. He had to insert himself. That's right. what you have to do. You cannot go out here and just not block and let people go. Maybe the block was too aggressive. According to Brad, it was too aggressive. But it's why, you know, I made, when I made the comment, I said, you know, Stenhouse was partially to blame because I've been in these wrecks before. And, yeah. you know, what sometimes looks like someone just intentionally wrecks someone isn't always like that. See the cars involved in the wreck. We've already heard from quite a few of them that came out of the infield care center. Pace car, hard left turn. And the field now approaching the Geico restart zone. 18 laps to go in stage two. Drafted hard as he can. Trying to hold that 24 there as long as he could, but didn't get the help before Kyle Bush was able to come up through there and push William clear. Michael McDowell in the 34, making the high line, making it three wide, trying to move up to the front. Have to think about the psyche of William Byron now, right? Has he gotten yeah. a message? Hey, people thought you were blocking too hard. Will he continue? His psyche and Rick Stenhouse is psyche too. Yes. So how does Rick Stenhouse feel right now? Is he still dealing with that? guilt over being involved or being part of that. And if he has any guilt. <laughs> Sometimes you have to act like you might, feel yeah, guilty and might not have move on. Man, wow. he's side drafted hard. That's what you got to do. It looks aggressive, but man, it is so important. You got to side draft so close if you're on that inside line. Push that outside line up against the fence. Hold him right there until that help comes from Newman. He's moving up the track. He's running. Stenhouse is running the center of the corner, trying to get a little bit of side draft off the 18. We're working it all the time. Every opportunity you get. And while they're doing that, William Byron, is he watching this, deciding, okay, which line do I jump in front of? He's getting a lot of information from the spotter. You know, that's, he's, and he's, of course, he's looking in the mirror. Really, I bet he's looking in the mirror 90% of the lap. You know, with peripheral vision, he's driving out the front, looking in the mirror and watching, seeing 
listening to the spotter and using using the, the, the mirror visually to sort of understand what the spotter's saying, which lines are making runs. The spotter's probably telling him that the 20 car got a great run there to the 18 and is going to give the 18 a shove and things like that. So watch right here down the back straightaway. Stay bottom. That 18 has no help in that top there. Stay bottom. Great information. See, that's the kind of information. You stay on the bottom. 18, they're not organized on the outside. They're getting organized. Get up there. Too late. 18's on his quarter panel. He's going to side draft him right here in three and four. Oh, oh my goodness. Sideways the 18 hard into the wall. Around goes the 24 as well. William Byron sliding all the way to the inside wall. Jamie McMurray caught up as well. Kyle Larson avoiding the 18. He went way down on the apron. Guys, I'm afraid to say it, but I think Stenhouse was involved in this one as well. I do too. Can't wait to see the replay so we can really dissect how this all started. I did not see these guys having an accident right there. Denny Hamlin. Before this race started yesterday, he said he expected to see a wreck fest. Well, Denny Hamlin, you were right. As Denny is probably sitting in his bus right now watching this race. I mean, this is crazy. We're not, I mean, we're not, we're not halfway. And the very charismatic winner from a week ago at Chicagoland Speedway, Kyle Busch walking away from his destroyed 18. He hit the wall hard. He comes over to talk with William Byron. Just checking on him. Let's take a look at the roof cam of the sifting. So he gets into the quarter panel 18. 18 is trying to get down there and side draft, and the 17 of Ricky Stenhouse is, is not following the 24. Not following his line exactly. He's also trying to side draft. So Ricky's trying to side draft 18. 18's coming down to side draft to 24. Just uh, <laughs> a couple bad decisions there. Trying to, you know, you've got to be aggressive on the side draft, and that's what happens sometimes when there's three or four guys trying to do the same thing. So what the 17's trying to do right there is he's trying to get as close to the left rear quarter panel of the 18 to slow him down, and he gets into him. You know, he came up the racetrack so aggressively, I almost wonder, if he got tight or something like, Maybe. I, you know, he can see that the 18 is on is right next to William Byron. He's the 18 can't go any lower. Watch, watch what happens right here. So see how close the 18 and the 24 are right here. 18, he's not going to go any lower. The 17's up the racetrack and gets into the 18. Just makes me wonder if Ricky Stenhouse Jr. didn't lose the front of the car and get up the racetrack and get into the side of him. In trying to side draft, and you're close to somebody, if your car gets tight and it moves two feet, now you're yep. into the left for the quarter panel and causing a wreck. We have saw these guys have balance issues on the bottom groove. He could have lost the front in the dirty air of the 24. He could have lost the nose a little bit there. I think he was going up there to get a little side draft and maybe did overestimate how much front grip he had. Let's listen in to Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s radio once again. Steering is still all good. Yeah, 10-4. I think I really touched him. I mean, obviously I did, but that's how light it was. All right, so you heard him say how light it was. So he wasn't really sure if he hit him, but let's go on board and pay attention to the tape on the steering wheel. So see he's turning the wheel, turning the wheel to the left, gets close to the 18, turns it further to the left as soon as he makes contact then he's back to the right just saving his car but yeah. that leads him to believe that he got tight just before he got to the 18. yeah you can see him in, add a little more input to it just as he's getting to the 18 car losing the front grip getting tight we heard guys talking about balance all weekend there's gonna be an issue we saw guys tonight having issues on the bottom groove and he got up in there and under you know overestimated the front grip when he went he was in the worst position you could be in for front grip, being behind the 24 and in the door of the 18 there. Let's go back to the... So Stenhouse, obviously, he's been right in the middle of all of this as a crew chief. Anything you can say to him, message him to keep him going forward, not backwards? I think at this point, when he's in the race car, it's very simple. It is, hey, look ahead. We have to win this race. We're going to talk about the rest when it's over, but right now it's task at hand. 
Kelly. Outside the infield care center with Kyle Busch. You made it through the first one. You got turned in the second one. What was, what was your take on that wreck? I don't know. Just, um, you know, disappointing to get uh, crashed out by the same guy that caused the first crash. Um, but, you know, our, our interstate batteries, Camry, showed some good speed. We showed some good patience there in that first stage. We were able to come home second, at least grab some points there. But, um, man, I don't know. You just you always come to Daytona waiting to crash and trying to figure out when and where and just hope that you can walk away from it. So um, that's really frustrating and disappointing to have to race these races like that, just on the fence, on the, on the line of, of when are you going to wreck, you know. But um, we go on. We go next week, I guess. Thank you, Kyle. Dave? Kelly, William Byron was the leader, and William, you drivers have pretty much taught us the lead is the safest place to be. What happened there? Yeah, just the 17 car just kind of, uh, I guess, hooked 18 into me. Um, seemed like he was being really aggressive, and um, the second time we've kind of been on the wrong end of, of something with him. So uh, unfortunate for us, but uh, we had a good race going. We needed to, to really have a, a really good day, the points position we're in. But um, overall, just part of speedway racing, I guess. But just hate to be on that side of it. Uh, but at least we let some laps, so that was good. Rick, he was doing everything he was supposed to do.